a very good morning good afternoon a good evening and a very warm welcome to each and every one of you who have gathered here to be a part of Threat Team Security Summit 2021 in this session we have ms sushmita nayak with us sushmita is a security professional with overall 5 plus 5 5.5 plus years of exp industry experience across multiple security domains specializing in application security well versed in api security web services mobile pen testing and network security she worked as part of both offensive and defensive teams in the capacity of team lead team member and individual contributor so shmita is actively contributing towards betterment of women in cyber security by co-heading women in cyber security india a non-profit all india women community chapter as a vice president Without further ado, I would like to invite Ms. Sushmita Nayak to take over the session. Welcome, Sushmita. The stage is all yours. Uh, I hope I'm audible. I have a, a network issue, uh, but I just wanted to check uh, before I start. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You okay? are audible. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank um, uh, Red Team Security Summit for giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, to, like, you know, host in this and then uh, present uh, my talk. Today we are going to talk about um, um, how do we leverage the loopholes in uh, that we find in our day-to-day -day web application in order to uh, launch a very big business attacks, right? So um, first of all, um, uh, thanks for the introduction. So uh, just briefing about myself. So I've been in this field for uh, about close to... Uh, we uh, worked with... Um, uh, web application pen testing as a specialized domain. So uh, in my day-to-day -day pen testing, I usually see, so what we normally do with respect to pen testing is um, like we uh, we normally test for the OAS top 10 or it could be some other uh, uh, commonly known uh, vulnerabilities. But um, how often do we uh, focus on the business attacks, right? So uh, we do not focus much on the logical flows, trying and understanding how the business works and um, how we can uh, utilize um, this workflow of the business and how we can, um, you know, uh, find out vulnerabilities in uh, these kind of business and try uh, try and, you know, execute something really big so that it can be fruitful as an attacker. It can be in terms of money or it can be in terms of uh, defaming a company or you would have seen so many such incidents that's happening out. You would have seen news where uh, people... Um, get hit by different ransomware, uh, they get hit by diff uh, different attacker communities and uh, they demand so, uh, so and so ransoms or they be like, uh, they try to deface a particular site or it could be uh, targeting a particular person. So why do these things happen? These things happen is mainly because of the uh, logical flaws uh, that we fail to address at the very beginning of our um, you know security architecture construction so that's that's the main thing that i want to uh, give you a brief intro about so uh, yeah business logic vulnerabilities these are the uh, flaws in the design and the implementation in an application which allows the attacker to uh, execute any kind of unwanted behavior so whenever we are trying to say for example it's a uh, payment um, website right or it could be an e-commerce website what could be the logic of it so payment um say banking it could be about transaction of uh, capital between uh, two different customers or uh, in e-commerce we're trying to purchase something it could be all uh, with respect to the goods and whatnot so uh, all all these are the logics of uh, the application when we are trying to construct something so we do not focus we we mainly uh, think about okay the logic has to be right we have to um, you know go between um, transferring money from customer a to customer b but there are so many use cases and so many scenarios where we need to think and, and uh, in a security uh, standpoint and those will be the test cases that we have to focus on in order to like you know um, 
utilize and in order to secure our business because it's not just important that you uh, launch your logic but also you need to secure it so that's what um, the whole session that i'm going to talk to you about is all about right now so now uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, these are the different uh, sectors usually i, I mean uh, i have written just five of them in my slide but um, there are many other sectors mainly um, uh leveraging these kind of attacks are mainly possible uh, in uh, financial kind of this one because uh, that gives a huge loss right so uh, in terms of uh, capital or it could be a customer data so we we all have our net banking sites right so if in case uh, we do not want our personal uh, account details or uh, anything as that uh, to be disclosed to us another person all these are private information or it could be a customer id or whatever it is so hello, all hello uh, are you presenting anything yes i am uh, it's not visible can you try it again sure yeah i'll, I'll... and now it's okay now it's okay yeah okay all right yeah um, sorry for that um, but was i audible okay thank you so um, as i told uh, we, we i have just mentioned about the five uh, sectors here but this is not limited to just five sectors okay uh, so there are different uh, places where uh, uh, an application or a whole company is based on logic of something so uh, these logics when uh, it's not put in different different use cases so an attacker can leverage this to his own benefit and at the end of the end result of it is going to be very bad uh, where he can um, you know um, as i told earlier he can uh, use it to loot money or it could be uh, defaming a company or it could be defaming a person so some of these sectors that i've mentioned here are uh, fintech organizations the banking sectors it could be travel websites e-commerce website or any gaming websites as well so um so let me give you an example let me try to uh, explain to you with an example of what i'm trying to say when it comes to a logical flaw okay so one of the example that i've written here is um, subscription content download okay say you have a website and you're trying to um, so it works in this way so uh, when you try to subscribe to one particular um, um, say that website uh, as a welcome gift maybe uh, it it could be there could be an option where it says okay in case you subscribe then as a, a welcome we are going to let you uh, download one video for free okay it could be some educational uh, website that we are talking about here uh, so if you in order to or it could be some movie website as well okay so when you subscribe to that particular um, website it says like okay uh, as a welcome you are allowed to download one particular content or one particular movie or what not so say for example there is no proper check so this is the logic so the first statement that i told you that's the logic that this whole website is built on so somebody has to sign up they needs to subscribe and then they'll be able to uh, download one free content so in case this is not being validated properly so what happens so how can an attacker misuse this feature so um let's say he uh, there is no proper validation of whether the uh, email account is being already registered or not or there is no registration option only you just have to subscribe and unsubscribe unsubscribe so in that case a person every time he can just subscribe and then he can just download the content and unsubscribe and again go resubscribe and download another content in this way he can uh, almost download everything for free right so say after one free content everything is supposed to be going in a charged manner but um, when the logic is not being dealt properly there are no if else uh, you, there is no proper check so in those cases what happens the, 
person can leverage this and download the entire content available in that website for free so uh, there should be some of the checks that what i'm talking about is uh, with respect to email id or it could be with respect to any other uh, there should be a secondary form of check where to just see whether the person has already subscribed to this and whether the person has already got the free content or not so these could be the two different checks in a very basic manner okay there could be some other complicated checks that you could place but in a very basic way you can say that whether the person has downloaded a content or not whether this particular email address has downloaded the content or not so if that one primary check can be done probably you know you can avoid i know obviously uh, you can come back and say that okay uh, what if i create another email address of course an attacker is always uh, finding way as to how he can uh, get things for free that that's obviously there but uh, this is one of the way where you can prevent okay uh, probably you know misusing uh, free download content download options okay so that is one such example another one is uh, transfer money to the same account via mobile and net banking so this is a very hypothetical example that i'm going to give recently it's not allowed the concurrent login between the mobile uh, phone and uh, your web browser at the same time it doesn't allow you to uh, log into to um, you know same account uh, using two different devices but um let's say uh, in earlier days that was not the case right so where um, uh, concurrent login was allowed so in those cases say for example you're trying to withdraw uh, 500 rupees uh, from say your current balance was 2000 rupees and you're trying to withdraw 1000 rupees from uh, or 500 rupees from your browser net banking and at the same time you're trying to uh, withdraw another 500 or 1000 rupees from your mobile at the same time say the logic is supposed to be designed the exact logic is supposed to be designed in such a way where one transaction has to happen and the details have to get updated and then the second transaction has to happen and the details have to get updated so this is the normal flow and this is the expected flow but in case um, the developers or if uh, the um, you know the logical uh, way of uh, checking this or updating this frequent updation is not working properly then what happens an attacker will be able to you know uh, launch both these actions simultaneously and then he will be able to um, you know withdraw more than what is required and then once everything gets updated he will see that okay uh, possibly the victim's account could be like you know uh, in a negative balance where he has to again pay so um, how is he going to do it in a real time scenario so that requires a whole different um, setup where he needs to get an access to his net banking and what not but let's consider uh, skip to the part where he has got an access to the victim's account and he is able to launch these two concurrent uh, activities at the same time so in those cases he will be able to withdraw all the money or maybe withdraw more money and bank will not be able to update it on time and at the end of the day when victim logs in to his actual account he will see that the balance could be in minus and uh, he might get a notice from a uh, bank saying that you there is a negative balance you might have to pay or what not so this could be another uh, scenario that i'm talking about when it comes to a logical uh, flaw the third example that i could bring out is a uh, use of coupon codes i guess we all have used our coupon codes right once in a while we would have used in different different you know hotel bookings flight bookings what not i uh, you would have already seen if somebody gives you um, say for example uh, there is a wonderful option these days gift a coupon code to somebody right so but it's only valid once or maybe twice uh depending on uh, how the company is um, issuing it so usually i've seen coupon codes which are only valid once so uh in those say for example such a check is not available so the 
it's logically implemented that it's supposed to give a coupon code but there is no proper updation which says that hey you know what this coupon code is used so you need to mark it as uh, you know used already in case that kind of a um, check is not present in the application then what happens or you know a person with a coupon code can be you uh, can use this coupon code multiple times like without having an expiry or even if that expires if the card or whatever expires for certain uh, years then he'll be able to leverage that uh, uh, you know that fruit of that uh, coupon code the discount he'll be able to use it for uh, another so many years so this is what i'm talking about so the logical um, when you build an application with logics then you need to uh, also implement certain security aspects to check whether the logic is working correctly or not because in case you don't do that then somebody else will be able to uh, you know look into those kind of scenarios and probably find a bypass to your logic and that's what affects the business so in all these three cases so it's a loss to the company right it's lost to the end users it, uh, in first case it could be lost to the website owners in third case also it's lost to the website owner he's gonna lose out on um you know so much of income because everything will be available in the discounted say for example the coupon code is giving 70 percent discount it's like huge right so these are some of the examples that i would want to quote when it when i try to say that you need to uh, look carefully when it comes to logical uh, flaws so how do we detect a logical flaw so when i say um, see it's it's very as i mentioned here it's very harder to find a logical flaw compared to a technical flaw technical flaw i guess most of all we pen testers might agree um, there are certain test cases that you can perform and uh, there is a certain methodology of certain doing certain things and of course you you have your own test cases and depending on the uh, architecture and scenario you form your test cases but technical flaws are pretty straightforward it could be excesses it could be csrf it could be sql injection we know what exactly it is you enter a malicious javascript payload and it is rendered as it is without any uh, validation then it leads to excesses so if you are able to insert some sql queries and then it renders an output it could possibly lead to an sql injection so it's very straightforward so all you have to uh, use uh, your technique of uh, pen testing is how do you find that whether it's vulnerable or not but business logic flaws doesn't work that way business in order to find a logical flaw you need to understand the logic of the application in first place what is this application about when you have got an application to test you need to sit with the uh, security architects or it could be uh, you know business owners app owners or whoever is the important stakeholder you need to sit with them and you need to try and understand what is the overall architecture what is the overall uh, business purpose why is this application built how is this built what are the different components that are being used in the application uh, does it have three components does it interact with somebody third party vendors does it uh, have a database does it have um, you know is it integrated to cloud you need to figure those things out you need to study the entire architecture properly and then you need to understand how the data is being flown between different components you know now there exists probably you know uh, you could be having an application that has like altogether five components now you need to know what is the data flow between these components you need to um, probably look from components component a to component b and then there could be a data going from component b back to a so you need to know all this data flows in order to understand and develop your test cases okay there is a data flow here possibly this could uh, happen here uh, you need to imagine so uh, logical flaws uh, figuring out a business logic flaws is all about your imaginary skills how how creative can you be how um, imaginative you can take things and uh, be like okay if this is the scenario if um, if i do like this um, will this break the system or if i uh, overuse this will it um, uh, notify to the end user 
So these are some of the uh, things that you need to identify. Uh, when I say, uh, will it notify to the um, you know end users? It means that it definitely has an existing security control, right? So uh, when you're trying to say, for example, let's go back to the coupon code example. You're trying to use a coupon code once it's successful. You got 70% discount. You were able to check out. You're trying to use the same coupon code again. It says that provided the application is secure enough and um, there is a proper um, validation for the coupon code used. So it has to ideally notify to you Okay, the coupon code is already being used. Okay, so which means that now there is a security control in place. So you need to understand and study whether the, there are any security controls in place or not. So that is very important. And fourth of all, you need to understand the request and response. So say, for example, we all as pen testers, we will all uh, proxy our traffic, the web application traffic through different proxy tools. Uh, it could be um, um, maybe it could be like uh, I do not want to name any specific tool. There are so many proxy tools out there, right? So um, most commonly used one is Burpsy. So if you're using that, we always analyze what is the request, what is the response, whether we're getting a valid response or not. Are we getting a success message? If you're not getting a success message, are we getting a error message so if we get an error message are we getting any specific error message so all these things need to be validated in order to understand uh, the overall um, business logic flaws so uh, for a person to understand there is a logical flaw he needs to overall understand what the business is about who are the end users of it and what are the existing security controls in place and he needs to be creative about okay these things are available what else can i do in order to break this neatly done architecture so this is very very important so once as a pen tester you will be able to identify these and also with the help of request response error messages and uh, the parameters and whatnot so you will be able to draw your own test cases in order to detect uh, the logical flaws of the business. Okay, um, so talking about uh, frequently found loss, again, uh, I have written five of them. This is something that came to my mind and which I've usually seen in my day-to-day uh, -day pen testing uh, experience, but uh, I'm pretty sure uh, there are more to this list for sure. Uh, so uh, the main categories that I have seen is one is race condition. Uh, so race condition is nothing but I was talking to you about uh, the payment example in the beginning slide, right? Where you're trying to um, launch two different um, uh, transactions in two different devices simultaneously and the bank fails to update. Um, so as per the thread synchronization, how it has to happen is one, one transaction has to, uh, it has to be initiated, completed, updated, and then the second transaction has to take place. So that is the usual flow. I mean, the, that's the usual flow. But in case that's not happening as expected, so uh, the threads are not able to update in a proper systematic manner. So what happens? There comes a race condition where you are executing two, uh, two common things, two same things parallelly, and there is no proper updation or there is no proper execution of uh, things. So it results in a race condition. So you'll be able to withdraw more money or uh, you'll be able to... Uh, it's not just with respect to money, right? It could be anything. So you're doing two uh, similar tasks simultaneously. And um, if the state change is not done correctly, it could be with respect to, um, say, for example, you're switching on your light bulb. So you might be having two switches at, for a one common light bulb. So at a time, say, um, you uh, and your friend might be switching on the two switches. What happens? Uh, a light bulb will not understand whether it has to switch it on or switch it off because there are two switches which are working simultaneously, right? So as a result, the light bulb may not just might just stop working or it might just go burst off right so these are some of the things that is used to break the 
system so this is this condition where you try to switch on to uh, you try to do two different things uh, at the same time that that's the race condition that i'm talking about so this is one of the uh, way where you can break your system and try to find a uh, logical flaw in your business so um, second of all is uh, multi factor authentication so multi factor authentication is something that we all uh, have heard and we all use so um I, so uh, usually in the traditional way how it used to happen we all used to have uh, a username and a password to authenticate to any website so these days uh, everybody has started taking security uh, seriously so uh, people have started uh, introducing um a uh, uh, two factor authentication right it could be through your phone so say for example even your phone right if you want to um unlock your phone so initially it used to be just numbers now you have pattern lock you have your biometrics and uh, what not so uh, these are some of the examples that i'm talking about when it comes to multi factor authentication so um, it's just another layer of authentication that you keep alongside of your username and password because passwords are easy to guess um, i'm not saying all the passwords are easy to guess but um, whoever has very little uh, security knowledge or um, whoever takes security lightly uh, will usually set a weak password there could be a password which is uh, a b c t 1 2 3 4 or it could be uh, password at the rate 1 or um, it could be india at the rate 1 2 3 or it could be somebody's name it could be somebody's pet name yeah what not so these are some of the passwords that are easy to guess and there is a list of uh, such that is available uh, you can find so many list uh, of uh, commonly used passwords in github or uh, any other websites um, if you actually look for commonly used passwords so you will get a whole together a list of uh, what what i'm talking about so the passwords which are fairly long in length and uh, which is combination of lower case upper case special characters and um, numbers so these are told to be very difficult to crack so um, in in case in case of those scenarios where an attacker will be able to crack such kind of passwords as well that is where uh, application owners have come up with additional layer of um, authentication where a person uh, gets um, you know a notification to approve uh, this login so uh, that that layer that we are talking about is nothing but a multi factor authentication so talking about different uh, types of uh, multi factor authentication uh, one is sms based so um, we would all, all have seen whenever we are trying to transact some money it gives an otp to us so it sends you a six digit four digit or whatever eight um, eight digit otp where you need to enter and then only the transaction becomes valid you will be able to transact some money so that is nothing but an sms based uh, authentication that uh, that's in place another one is call based authentication this you would have seen normally uh, when you want to um, identify somebody's uh, identity like you want to say hey i'm a valid user so or you want to validate somebody's sim card or something like that so in these cases you'll get a phone call which uh, tries to uh, validate through phone authentication so that's nothing but a call authentication um next is email authentication so instead of uh, sim or in addition to um, uh, sms based or call based sometimes you get email uh, notifications as well where the otps come to your email or you might even uh, receive some links which uh, talks about okay uh, click on this particular um, link that is sent to you on email only then you can proceed to the next step or, or only then you can uh, log in uh, uh, to that particular website uh, only if you verify that particular account so these are some of the um, uh, places where we see an email based mfa soft token soft token is nothing but 
uh, those apps like Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, RSA apps, there are so many different apps that are available. That whole purpose is to generate a random uh, token every every 60 seconds or 30 seconds. It keeps changing. Um, uh, it keeps giving you a new, new token. And every time you want to log in uh, to any particular, it could be um, a remote computer that you want to log in, or it could be any uh, corporate uh, website that you want to log in. So you might have to enter some of these uh, tokens in addition to your password. So those can be obtained in um, the soft token, um, soft token or those apps that I'm talking about, authenticator apps. And uh, there is another concept called hardware token. So this is normally now that we have all gone virtual. So uh, hardware token is very less to be seen. Uh, but when we were all uh, back uh, in office, I guess most of you would have all had uh, one hardware device with you where you uh, that becomes your authenticator. It could be those RSA tokens or uh, it could be the duo key or whatnot. So those are all your hardware token where you need to uh, maybe put in your fingerprint and then it gives you an authentication. So these are all the tokens that comes with the uh, hardware interaction. So uh, this could be another layer of um, MFA that we can look for. So um, why I spoke about um, MFA is because See, this is a second layer of authentication and sometimes application rely only on the first layer and second layer of authentication. And if you're somehow able to bypass this second layer of authentication as well, you are directly inside the application. You don't have to, um, you know, you you will be able to uh, directly get access to the entire application. You will be able to uh, deny access to uh, legitimate users or even it could be admin for that matter. So um, that is one of the reasons. So if you have observed, um, so these are a couple of the bypass techniques. I, I'm pretty sure you would have observed this. So um, say, for example, uh, you're trying to uh, initiate a transaction. So you try to keep uh, initiating one one transaction. Say every uh, you're trying to initiate ten transactions of ten rupees each. So every time it sends you an OTP. At one point of time, you kind of feel that okay, is the pattern repeating the OTP pattern? Say for example, at first uh, transaction, it sends you an OTP of like one two three. Second time it sends you two three four. Third time it sends you five six seven. And fourth time, it repeats back to one, two, three. So now there is a pattern. So if if an application or if the flaw, if the logic is designed in such a way where after 10 uh, OTPs, it needs to repeat back to the first OTP, that's a logical flaw. So that can be bypassed if a person is closely observing as an attacker, if he's closely observing what kind of OTPs are there and if he sees, sees a repetition, then he can use the brute force method to figure out uh, what is the repetition and what is the sequence. And he can make use of these OTPs and launch his own uh, 2FA, right? So he'll get access to the username and password and he'll obviously get access to the uh, 2FA and he will be uh, easily logging into the application. So this is one of the uh, bypass technique. Through brute force, you can actually bypass uh, MFA. Having said that, there are remediation methods to this that are already in place. So uh, we are not talking about the remediation. I'm just talking about what are the different logical flaws and what could be the possible bypasses that I have seen in my experience. Okay. So second. pen tester would have uh, sent their traffic from a proxy tool and would have observed what is a request and what is a response so in case if a pen tester is able to change or if an attacker is able to change a wrong response to a previously captured right response and if there is no proper validation and it just sees okay uh, there is a keyword called success okay fine it means that it could be valid so if if in case the application is designed in such a way then there is a problem because it could be an entirely wrong response but all it looks for is a 
keyword called success and if somehow attacker is able to understand that he'll just put success in every response once he starts putting that then it's easier because a the server just validates the success keyword and he will be able to get into the application very easily so this is nothing but the response manipulation you res you manipulate the response basically the error response every time by understanding what could be the possible valid response okay and as usual the third uh, technique is csrf csrf is meant to you know trick victim especially a logged in victim uh, to um, work or to execute actions on his behalf so that is uh, that's that's the main motto of csrf so using csrf you can always uh, bypass uh, mfa you can uh, it, provided there is no proper uh, validation against the csrf attack um, one one attacker can leverage a csrf attack to actually bypass the mfa uh, that is in place so in case an mfa is bypassed then uh, that additional layer of security is just uh, it's a logic that is implemented but it is uh, not going to be of any use uh, because uh, an attacker will be able to just log into the application or he'll be able to just abuse the functionality so yeah uh, moving on uh, so another kind of um, um, what you say so this is another category which leads to a, a business logic error so that is nothing but waf we would all, all have heard of this waf so uh, what is waf so waf is nothing but these are the firewall rules uh, so these are the certain rules saying that okay you see this particular uh, say uh, let me simplify it so um, say maybe you're, you're it's like you're trying to tell your kid uh, the moment uh, you see uh, a bad guy entering, just um, don't open the door. But you moment you see somebody whom you know and um, who is who is whom you whom you can rely on, open the door. So it's something like that. You are instructing. So here the kid is nothing but your website. So you write certain rules. You identify certain bad guys. Um, which means that it could be bad request, it could be a bad code, or it could be anything for that matter. So you write these, or it could be some bad IP as well. So you write these rules saying that whenever you see any request coming in this particular format, or uh, whenever it has this particular data, or it's coming from this particular IP, then it's considered malicious, block it, okay? And if not, allow it to your application so these are the certain rules that you usually write but again so all these firewall rules are written by humans so humans are tend to do uh, human errors right so there are cases where um, you try to you know you write some rules and then uh, you wouldn't have considered all the possible scenarios of this and it's not even easy to consider all the scenarios to be very honest so it's not it's it's very difficult to imagine 100 different scenarios say for example uh, you are blocking a letter a from coming to your web application what if you have to write two or three different uh, kinds of rules you need to block capital letter a you need to block small letter a you need to block um a coming in ascii format whatnot so there are different ways right so and everything is not feasible again it depends on what kind of a business uh, application that you have built certain uh, rules cannot be written because it is required for a business functionality to work accordingly so uh, if you write a rule and if you try to block it there are high chances that it will not work so that is one of the reason why uh, you know you need to be extremely careful when you write any uh, kind of firewall rules and for sure there are bypasses available here as i told you it's it's very difficult to consider all the corner cases so uh, what are the different bypass techniques that i have usually seen so in web application we try to uh, say 
the first one that i've written here is about encoding techniques uh, url double encoding multiple encoding what am i talking here about so uh, say it's an xss vulnerability so you are trying to um, um, enter a malicious javascript payload so but your waf has uh, has a rule which says that whenever you see a malicious javascript uh, payload just block it so that is what is written so you are not able to uh, write any malicious javascript code but what happens if you change the format of it what if you send it in a url encoded format or what if you double encode it or you use different different encoding and then try to send it or you encode it in one format and again re encode it into another format can you consider all these cases it's it's highly impossible so that's that's one of the reason why we find waf uh, bypasses very very uh, you know prevalent and it's not um, more reliable when it comes to securing your application you would have always seen uh, in uh, the pen testers would have already seen these scenarios where clients come to you and say that we have a waf in place and we always recommend waf is an isolation but it's not an ultimate solution and this is one of the reason because every this one has a bypass every rule written can have a bypass in a firewall so it's it's very difficult for somebody to consider all the possible corner cases and write it in the firewall rules not very easy so that's why waf is not a full proof solution it's good to have it because it's going to block majorly known things but it's not the ultimate okay another way of bypassing waf could be using of custom headers there are so many x forwarded uh, for x forwarded by uh, there are so many headers that are available so uh, each of these headers x forwarded star headers has different different context uh, where you can use through this you can you know uh, bypass um, the ip that it is coming from or it could you could say okay it's uh, coming from a particular valid source and what not so through this you can say uh, you can actually uh, allow the request to pass in so that could be another way and another one is bypassing through um, http parameter pollution parameter pollution is nothing but introducing two different uh, you know similar parameters say for example you want to log in to your account and the username is admin okay and um, there could be what you do is uh, you write username admin and password could be password L let's take it hypothetically so uh, for the admin account the password is password so in a parameter pollution you want to log into super admin as well so it's just one word different so it could be username could be s admin for a super admin account so in that case you introduced username one equal to admin and username two equal to s admin and password equal to password so in case the application doesn't validate properly doesn't see a two different usernames then in that case it will just automatically log you in to any one of these accounts and sometimes high chances that it can log you into super admin account instead of an admin account okay then you have more power than an admin account so this is what i'm talking to you about when it comes to parameter pollution you introducing another parameter which is similar to the existing parameter and you try to confuse the logic so that you'll be able to bypass the existing control that's in place so uh, these are some of the techniques when we talk about uh, waf bypass so um, next is about client side controls so client side controls are fairly simple so this is nothing but um, everything that we have talked about is more or less uh, related to server but there are certain things that uh, we can see it in our own browser and right it could be the http cookies or it could be uh, any uh, form field or something like that so whenever you see uh, these kinds so if you see an hidden input field try to enable it try to see whether you can uh, uh, you know uh, enable it and use it so the moment you enable can some 
change happen or if you see any cookies having any sensitive details say it is having a username try to change the username to something else and see if you can get access to some other account so these are the kind of uh, attacks uh, that will bypass the logic and then you will be instead of logging into one account you will be pro possibly logging into another account or if you try able to um, enable the input field um, instead of uh, something paying as 100 rupees if you are able to somehow manipulate and change it to zero rupees then you will be able to get a whole good which is worth of 100 rupees for zero right so uh, these are some of the um, that's again a loss to the company if you're able to manipulate prices through your browsers so these are nothing but the client side control attacks that we are talking about and uh, the last thing that i i have usually seen with respect to when it comes to logical flows is um, the payment gateway so payment gateway as i told earlier it's nothing but like you know you're changing trying to change the price um, to say a good is for 100 rupees and then you're trying to change it to zero or you're trying to change it to a negative value so that could be one of the thing or um, you're trying to uh, you know uh, modify uh, the card numbers or cvv numbers or uh, so on so these are some of the payment uh, gateway uh, checklist that normally that we uh, follow and uh, if there is no proper validation then a person can be um, can leverage this to buy or get a good of uh, you know more amount i mean uh, whichever a good of more amount to a lesser amount or almost zero amount so um, lastly how do we prevent this so prevention is not as easy but uh, one thing is that if you are able to understand clearly what is this whole business about and what is the logic uh, that you are applying to your business when you are trying to construct a business then you will be able to uh, develop your own use cases and scenarios and come up with the test cases and then you can integrate this in the very beginning phase rather than somebody else a third party attacker coming and attacking your system you can think of these test cases when you're designing the system and put it in the design phase and try and test for these things so that you know it will be much secure when you have already launched the application rather than allowing a third person or a bug um, you know bug hunter or somebody to find it out for you okay so this is one of the prevention that uh, one can talk about in terms of this yeah uh, that is pretty much it for uh, this and thank you so much thank you so much uh, sushmita that was a wonderful session um, so everyone uh, in the stage 2 we have a session by ms harleen kaur on the topic from script kiddy to ethical hacker detailed roadmap so if you are interested then you can uh, join that session Okay thank you so much everyone for being such a great audience thank you so much